All right, we're gonna change the thermostat on this 04 Silverado with the 4.3 Vortec. Uh, should be pretty much the same for any year, uh, 99 or whenever they came out with these through mid 2000s with the Vortec. It's probably gonna be just about the same for the Blazers and the S10s also. So right there's your thermostat housing. You got two bolts holding your cap on there. And when you pop this thing off of here, there's gonna be a little bit of coolant that comes out. So on this truck at least, these are half inch. I'm just using a regular wrench here that's short enough uh, because you're a little short socket. You're not gonna be able to get that on there, I don't think. Maybe if you had a medium length socket, but you know, if you use a deep well on that so that you can get it out because of this post here, you're probably gonna be hitting this and not be able to use a deep well. So unless you have just the right size socket, you're gonna have to use a wrench like that unless you wanna take all this crap out which I'm not trying to do not a big deal but if it's something I can eliminate I'm not gonna mess with it obviously it's gonna be hot so you're gonna want to do this when the vehicles cooled down especially for getting your hand back here on this bolt this pipes really hot all right so I might be able to just yeah move that out of the way so it's not attached there it's just your hose back there and that's pretty much it. I kind of need two hands for this, but I'm thinking I can just kind of pull it up and out of the way. And even right there, I could probably pop that thing out. See, I just popped it off to the slide like that. Well, obviously, if you got really old, brittle pipe, that could put a crack in the pipe, but this one's nice and flexible, so I ain't worried about it. So it'll most likely stick a little bit, and you can just put a flathead in it and try to pry up, or even just put like a hook in there, even like the end of a coat hanger if you have to to get it uh, to pop loose. So this fluid level's up here in this rim where the gasket for the new one's gonna set. And so I want them, I want to make sure that gasket seats completely so I don't want coolant under it. So I'm gonna uh, stuff a rag in there and try to soak just a few millimeters of that up so I can dry up that ring. That way I got a nice dry, clean mating surface to put the new one in on. All right, so I soak all that up with an old rag. You want to soak it down about that much if you can because when you install the new one, it's going to make that level push up. So that's all nice and dry. I wiped off the perimeter. This is pretty much is what's going to seal it here. But I tried to get this part clean also, and then I wiped off the bottom of this. So now we can install the new one. Real nice that this one comes with this rubber ring already on because usually you gotta get it on yourself. And it's a real pain in the ass trying to get that ring on there just right, so. That makes it a lot, I spend more time trying to get that rubber ring on there than anything. So it's nice that this one came with the ring already installed. So it just kinda sit there. And I gotta pull this up high enough to make sure I don't catch it when I go back over top of it. I did notice putting it back in because it's really hard to get your fingers back in there. You can get a socket on it. And I just can't get the extension completely in because it's heading this. Which again, wouldn't be that difficult to remove. But I'm able to just turn that down in there. You can probably even break it free. You might even use a little swivel joint if you don't have the clearance. But you can get a socket down in there. Kind of the same thing here. But you can actually get that one on. Let's just put it at a little pivot. And it's gonna rub on this a little bit but all right so your torque specs on these bolts they are uh, it's 21 foot pounds of torque but unless you take this bracket off and this intake off you can't really get a torque wrench down in there um, but it's not one of those things that it's like got to be super precise like heads or anything if you just use your wrench here and get it nice and snug on both of them they tighten up you can feel it get tight and then stop and that's pretty much where you're going to want them so you know almost every bolt under the hood has a torque spec if you look hard enough for it but not every bolt is so it's you don't need a torque spec for everything this is one of those things as long as you get it good and snug it should be fine So once you have it snug down, uh, you're done. You're gonna need to top off 
your coolant on these trucks there's no radiator cap you just add it directly to here so fill it up and let the truck run let it get up the full lap temp and then let it run for a few minutes after that also to make sure there's no overheating issues uh, these things self vent pretty well some cars you have to sit there and mess with it uh, trying to burp the system to get all the air out but with these trucks it's not really an issue but you still want to double check just to be safe so fill it up let it get the full operating temperature and then sit there for at least another five minutes full op temp to make sure it's not overheating which it shouldn't uh, take it down the road don't go too far from the house keep an eye on the temp gauge make sure it's still good and then you're golden the only last thing i would say is uh the reason that old one sticks is because that rubber seal adheres to the housing so uh, you want to give it a good one heat cycle and then one cool down cycle before you you really romp on it don't be hard on it that way it'll give that rubber a chance to seat to the metal and completely seal hey if you like this video please leave a like and uh, thanks for watching